Well, dear, dear Presidium, dear colleagues, uh, today allow me to share with you the experience of uh, uh, treatment of patients with HER2 positive, uh, HER positive, locally disseminated uh, um, gastric cancer and uh, junk. Um, junction and uh, gastroesophageal junction. So allow me to uh, speak about the clinical aspects of the treatment for this cohort of patients. What are we relying on? There we at present so we have uh, low uh, indicators for live here survival of these patients of the uh, 3A 3C stages. And uh, how can we increase the overall survival of these patients using perisurgical? Uh, chemotherapy, um, uh, adjuvant and neoadjuvant. And uh, so, adjuvant or neoadjuvant, uh, who of the patients um, are gaining more? Um, uh, when this or that regimen is used, uh, uh, should, um, uh, no adjuvant should be more quite uh, intensive. Adjuvant should be less intensive because uh, afterwards the patients go through surgery. And here in this slide you can see uh, all this well represented. If we take no adjuvant um, therapy, most of the patients are getting that. And adjuvant uh, therapy uh, <coughs> is uh, uh, not for all patients, and not all of them go through the complete cycle. Probably because of the intensive surgery, uh, they are not um, being able to uh, uh, to, to uh, convalence and uh, some of them have certain complications after the surgery and they are unable to get uh, complete uh, uh, driven therapy. So uh, this has already been said. I would like to draw your attention to the subgroup analysis of those patients who have the positive um, um, uh, head to status, 7% of patients. So look at the most interesting things. If we uh, have the group analysis, we can see that overall survival with these patients with uh, head to positive is not different, uh, 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 no adjuvant and surgical. And maybe no adjuvant chemotherapy is not that effective for this group. And so we decided to try and answer this question. And uh, we um, uh, carried out our clinical trial for that purpose. Here is the uh, frequency of the the manifestation of hyperexpression amplification of HER2 is different with different authors, but it's uh, uh, 4 to uh, uh, 32 percent. And Nadezhda has already demonstrated this slide. We began to think of what particular regimen is to be selected for our patients. And indeed, the most effective uh, regimen is the regimen of chemotherapy following FLOT uh, scheme and, uh, and then selecting a certain regimen, we um, worked with two, actually, chemotherapy flood, full flux, because as, uh, has, uh, the question has been asked if all the patients can um, be under this regimen. Further on, I will demonstrate those patients who were included and uh, their age. And so our patient, uh, the oldest patient, was uh, 80 years old. So uh, the, uh, we, we had a very varied uh, cohort, and uh, there were two full flux and flux lot selected depending on the comorbidities and on the age. Now, how can we uh, strengthen the adjuvant uh, for the patients with uh, HER2 positive status? Now, of course, we can add to chemotherapy transmuzumab. Now, uh, transmuzumab, if we take the group analysis, we can see at the, patient, the patients here uh, who had um, uh, the, in the um, therapeutic regimen who added a trust, trustuzumab had certain um, preferences and advantages as compared to those who did not get 11 to um, uh, uh, as compared to uh, 16 months. Of course, we relied on the uh, studies of um, perioperational surgery uh, with uh, HER2 target therapy and uh, there's a lot of different studies which demonstrate with the different combinations uh, of these different drugs, uh, transmissive above the double blockade and sesoplatin with the different infusions with transmodulation. And so we were able to get positive results in all these um, uh, studies. And we must say that uh, in Russia, we must have a, um, um, a special study of uh, peri-operational uh, um, uh, therapy for the patients with the um, cancer of um, gastroesophageal junction. 
And so there's the Center of Neo-Juven Therapy with Razumov with the um, uh, frequency of objective responses, uh, the expression of uh, pathomorphological regression, toxicity, uh, the degree of toxicity, the terms, uh, the um, periods of surgical treatment and post-surgical complications and secondary goals, the assessment of the efficacy of the peroperational therapy in combination of trastuzumab, um, uh, the recurrence-free survival and overall recurrence, the assessment of the change of status uh, along with HER2 new and, of course, a juvent, uh, no juvent therapy assessment. Well, we analyzed uh, 15, 14 out of these uh, uh, 14 have gone through surgery and if we take the, uh, the gender composition that out of these 15, there are two women and 13 men and I need to say that the age, um, um, as I said, from 30 and uh, the most senior patient was 80 and histologically um, uh, there's uh, different types of uh, uh, this um, low, uh, uh, d- differentiated angiosaroma with two um, average differentiated with nine high differentiated with three and uh, uh, non differentiated and so you can see the characteristic of the patients so 10 um, were included with um, herdopositive and uh, um, five with I guess there's a faggal junction cancer. So you can see over here on the diagram that most of the patients uh, had uh, the second B stage and the, then the second group were the patients with second A stage and a smaller number with 3A and 3B. And <clears throat> here are the uh, schemes of uh, neojuvent therapy. Our median, as you can see, the age, as I said, uh, was 61.8. Most of the patients, nine patients, were getting chemotherapy, full fox, with transmosumab, and six patients flot with uh, transmosumab. You can see the complete uh, um, uh, uh, regress with two, partial with three, stabilization with nine, progressing, um, um, uh, and I will show the example, which is the, the progressing is 25 months out of the 15 patients. We have not been able to find any. Um, uh, no post-operation complications so with just one patient and uh, death uh, along with no adjuvant therapy after surgery. No, no deaths at all. If we look at the patamorphosis, you can see with two patients it was grade one, four patients grade two, five patients grade three, and uh, two uh, with grade, uh, grade four with two and uh, grade five with just one patient. You can see on the diagram the changes of the stage depending on the use of the ge- regimen for Fox or Flot or together with Trastorizumab. You can see here how the stages uh, change along with the um, um, uh, 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 perisurgical neojuvent therapy. With seven patients, the first stage was revealed with two patients. Uh, the, uh, the tumor was not uh, found. Oh, three patients, um, the second A, and with just two patients, uh, three. Stage three. No, the changes of HER2 status. That's interesting, of course, for us to see how the HER2 new status changed. And uh, we have already seen uh, um, uh, the slide indicated to the patients who were getting getting trastuzumab, and it was demonstrated that HER2 new status was changing. And if we take about the prognostic uh, stage, then we would like to see the HER2 new status and the changes of the HER2 new status. Now, so our goal was to check that uh, along with neojuvent therapy out of the 14 pa- patients uh, and the surgery and one patient retained the positive HER2 new status. Now, in the um, uncertainty was with two patients. And for two patients, there was no data, complete regression, and they did, did not uh, go through the definition of HER2 new status. And two patients had HER2 new status to two plus and uh, Uh, they go through FISH in order to define the status of HER2. And the negative status, nine uh, patients lost their gene along with the therapy with trastuzumab. So here are examples of uh, one of the clinical cases. Let's look at immunohistochemistry before treatment, adenocarcinoma, G3 with a singling ring cells, and how the immunohistochemistry has changed after treatment. This tumor requires molecular genetic assay 
because here two new studies according to the studies it's uh, two classes and it requires additional examination toxicity propyl period uh, operational therapy let's look with the transizumab hematological toxicity grade 3 anemia in two patients comparing with adjuvant 4 uh, neutropenia of the second grade 3, 2, and 4, neutropenia th third grade, 3 neoadjuvant, and 5 patients in adjuvant. Gastrointestinal toxicity, nausea of the second grade, neoadjuvant, 3 patients. So these patients, so they received mostly fluid, regardless uh, hematogenic therapy, and 4 patients in uh, adjuvant, nausea. And diarrhea, the second two grade, two patients, and adjuvant, five. Liver to hepatic toxicity, neoadjuvant, zero, and grade two, only in one patient, in adjuvant regimen. Uh, Progression-free survival and overall survival. All our patients now, they alive. Seven patients we have followed up more than six months. Four patients more than 14 months. Four pa patients from 16 to 22, and one patient is a clinical case I will share with you more than 24 months. The median of follow-up, 11.6 months. Clinical case, patient, male, 58, uh, the uh, T3N1M0, uh, the upper part of the body, tumor, comorbidity, toxic anemic syndrome, comorbidity, coronary heart disease, histological uh, examination, ulcerated, low-grade adenocarcinoma, and neoadjuvant therapy, we decided to do float plus transcesumab. After four cycles, the patient was examined, partial regress, then we performed a combined gastrectomy with the lymphodissection in the D2. It's how immunohistochemistry looked before the treatment. Let's look on the slide. Uh, hyperexpression 3 plus and how immunohistochemistry looked after uh, addition of trans to zoom up uh, in adjuvant uh, after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. It has been shown undoubtedly that for this patient and for other patients, we thought that. Whether or not they will retain hyperexpression and whether or not we should retain transtizumab, because it was shown that in the second line, when we are talking about uh, uh, there were no difference uh, of whether it was chemotherapy with or without transtizumab, and then it was shown that only 31 patients retained positive hair new status. I'd like to uh, refer to the audience. My first clinical case, the question, the diagnosis, upper part of the stomach tumor, T3N1M0, postoperative T2N0 and M0, the previous treatment, histological and immunogistic chemistry, adenocarcinoma G3, infiltrative muscle layer, moderate uh, patamorphosis, hernia negative. What shall we do with this patient? Dynamic, dynamic follow-up, continue float plus transtuzumab, maybe float because he hasn't retained a new uh, hernia, uh, full fox or Capecitabin. Please vote. I'm impatient to wait for your result because I'm very interested in your opinion. Then I will analyze your results. And probably we will surprise you how we uh, treated this patient after all. Please display on, uh, the results of voting on the screen. I think that our viewers, uh, they are voting, deciding. 
until we are waiting for the results, I'd like to say that this patient, we actively followed him up. Uh, there are no uh, any uh, signs of relapse. We have been following, we have followed him for more than 20, for 24 months. I'd like to say that all the patients who received perioperatively neoadjuvant or adjuvant float plus transtizumab or fox plus transtizumab, they tolerated this regimen quite well, and now we see uh, we very good results as to overall survival and progression-free survival. All these patients are being followed up actively, postoperatively. Somebody uh, selected 12% uh, dynamics uh, follow-up, the majority chose uh, continue chemotherapy float plus transtuzumab despite uh, negative HER2 status uh, as a result of target therapy, 32% float, 15% full, full flux, and capacitabin 7.5%. Uh, may maybe I disappoint you. We selected dynamic treatment. Uh, um, probably uh, we will plan uh, to continue float. But a uh, patient has quite extensive post-operative complications. He and uh, uh, we, uh, the patient, missed time for neoadjuvant therapy. He received only four cycles of neoadjuvant therapy. Now he is be he is living actively. He has no any signs of progression. Uh, we asked themselves a question. Uh, to him, uh, we do neoadjuvant float plus trans to zoom up. We analyzed a patient who received only float T3 and 1M0, T4 and 1M0, patient with trans to zoom up. Partial regress and partial uh, only flow plus transtizumab stabilization. Patomorphosis, uh, three, third grade and first grade, postoperative uh, with combination T2 N0 M0 and T3 N3 M0 mono regimen. Time to progression, no progression, more than 24 months, and patients who received mono, uh, mono regimen seven months before the progression. Uh, case number two, the body uh, of the stomach T3 N1 M0, uh, asthenia of the first uh, um, Great coronary heart disease, post-infection post cardiosclerosis, arterial, arterial hypertension, two, uh, chronic uh, heart failure, cerebral um, blood circulation, and let's uh, look at histology before the treatment neoadjuvant therapy, and then a carcinoma grade two, positive heart two. I'm not going to read out the results of the fibrogastroscopy. The patient was given four cycles of neoadjuvant therapy. We decided on full FOX despite post infarction cardiosclerosis and myocardial infarction. Uh, uh, we didn't exclude a neoadjuvant therapy and we added transtizumab. Uh, we performed extensive combined gastrectomy with lymphoduct section, uh, histology, lympho. Uh, Adenocarcinoma G2, immunohistochemistry, he retained her new status. The question to the audience, this patient, we uh, administered him four cycles of neoadjuvant hemotherapy, full FOX plus transtuzumab, extensive combined gastrectomy, and then after neoadjuvant therapy, T3, N2, M0. What shall we choose after operation? Float plus transtuzumab, float, full FOX plus transtuzumab, full FOX on dynamic following up. Please vote so that to assess your results. I'd like to say that these patients, regardless of the fact that he had quite serious comorbidities, he tolerated this chemotherapy quite good. 
uh, we controlled uh, his uh, uh, with ECG for four cycles. Each uh, two cycles, we performed echocardiography because we were concerned about this patient due to his uh, um, myocardial infunction in the past and toxicity of transtizumab. And he had uh, quite serious comorbidities uh, at the time of choice. 27% decided that to we will do float plus transtizumab, 8% float, full fox plus transtizumab 57, and full fox 4%, and dynamic following up 2%. I agree with the majority. We continue. Uh, full flux plus transtizumab. Now the patient. Well, now we are continuing to follow the patient up. I'd like to share with you a very interesting clinical case. Patient with the inferior uh, tumor of the uh, body of the stomach, T3 and 1 M0, positive hair uh, to expression, uh, histological uh, we conducted uh, three cycles, float, uh, full flux plus transizumab. You can see the fibrotic changes, uh, early uh, perivascular invasion didn't detect, was not detected. Let's look at fibrogastroscopy before and after four cycles. It's a fantastic result. In March, uh, we did uh, diagnostic laparoscopy with gastroscopy lymphodissection in D2. Uh, we received a live tumor, was not detected, and uh, cur curative papamorphosis, uh, the full regression. How to, uh, what shall we do with this patient? Clinical uh, stage, T3, N1, M0, after surgical operation, T0, N0, M0, the full regress. What to do? Dynamically follow up or only float in mono regimen because uh, there is no, uh, there is uh, the hyper expression still retained. This patient. We decided to conduct four cycles of chemotherapy together with transtuzumab, and now we are actively following him up.